why I chose not to use the AppRite platform. So this video crossed my feed earlier this week and I wanted to watch it through with you here and see if the points and criticisms in the video were valid and maybe give some context and some rebuttals. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll watch it together and I'll just give my input and react to it. So there are three reasons why I uh, still don't want to use the AppRite platform for a serious projects. The first thing that I don't like about that platform is the pricing. So they say that they are fully transparent, which is a great thing, and I appreciate that. You can indeed see how it's gonna each feature gonna cost you. On the good side, their uh, pricing is a lot uh, simplified, unlike Firebase, where uh, it's a lot more complex than this. At the moment of recording this video, they have uh, four different uh, pricing plans. The first one is free, which is amazing. The second one costs about uh, $15, and the third one is around uh, $600. Now, you must agree that there is a huge gap between the second and the third pricing tire. So, I agree here, $15 a month to $599 a month. That's quite a jump here, but he's not understanding exactly how this works. So let me try to clear this up here. So the pro plan at $15 a month, you get 200,000 monthly active users, 300 gigs of bandwidth and 150 gigs for storage here and 3.5 million executions a month. That's quite a bit. So if your app is getting to this point, you're really scaling up already. Now, if you wanna scale up, you can always add bandwidth. So $40 for 100 gigs extra, that's an add-on. You can do $3 for 100 gigs for storage. And as you scale up, you can make this calculation yourself and see what this is gonna cost you based on how your app is scaling up. So you never have to actually leave the pro plan. You can scale up with it. Now. A lot of apps are not going to scale up beyond this pro plan, so you can stay here, but the scale plan and enterprise plan are actually there for you. So with these, we're actually giving you bulk volume here. So volume prices, you can actually get those same features for cheaper if you're able to scale up with it. So by the time you're reaching that $599 a month, uh, at this point, it actually makes sense to go to that next plan because it's going to be cheaper for you. So you're able to scale up as you go, but utilize these plans for extra support, maybe extra features and volume pricing. On the other hand, on our app, right, we have uh, unlimited numbers of uh, reads and writes, which is a little bit strange because usually platforms uh, do put the pricing on that uh, specifically. But I'm guessing that they're trying to attract new developers with that policy. I just hope that they don't remove it in the future. But we will see about that. So let me clear this up. With read and writes, we charge by bandwidth and not actual execution. So by performing more read and writes, you are going to use up more bandwidth. So you're still getting charged for those. The second thing that I'm waiting for them to release is a Kotlin multi-platform library. So don't get me wrong, they do have uh, quite a lot of different SDKs, including the one for uh, Android and iOS. But since we are going in that uh, Kotlin multi-platform direction, where we can build applications for uh, both the mobile platforms using a single code base, I would rather choose a platform that uh, offers a Kotlin multi-platform library than the one that doesn't. MongoDB Atlas, for instance, uh, had one amazing SDK that allowed us to sync the data between the remote database and the local one, which was amazing but unfortunately they are shutting it down. So the fact that AppRite offers so many different SDKs and supports so many different runtimes is one of the coolest things about it. It's one of the things that stood out to me before I joined AppRite. And we do have a Kotlin SDK. Unfortunately, we don't support Kotlin multi-platform. Honestly, I don't know too much about it actually. And the way that we work on our SDKs is based on user demand. And right now, Kotlin developers make up for a small percentage of our users. And if this ever changes, if demand ever grows, this is something that we can work on in the future. At this point, uh, it's just not enough demand for it. Maybe it's something that I can work on. I can do some outreach with the community, try to maybe grow in that Kotlin community here. So from what I've seen, not many backend as a service providers offer this. I do know there is one that offers it, but not from the official company. It's a third party package created by the community. So I think there is an option for this by another provider, but I don't know if anyone officially supports it right now. Which brings me to my third reason, and that is trust. So I have recently experienced a deprecation of a MongoDB device sync feature. So I have wasted around two weeks migrating away from that deprecated MongoDB device sync feature. But when I think about it, everything is a lesson. 
In such cases, you do need to be prepared and uh, have a backup plan just in case. Nevertheless, the app right says that they are backed up by uh, some great investors, and I hope that's true. Okay, so this is very practical. I totally get the fear. You want to know that the platform you're using is going to be around in the next couple of years. I hate to break it to you. This is something that is really out of our control. We can do our research and try to see what a company's doing with the platform, but so much of this is out of our hands. We've seen Facebook kill Parse, a company with a lot of funding. You would think that Facebook's always going to support it. They just basically open sourced it and left it out to die. Google, killed by Google.com, they're always shutting down products. So there's really no way of telling what a company is going to do or how a company runs their product. This is something that's always going to be a risk at some point. Now, with AppRite, there are a few things that you can consider, maybe some reassurances I can give you. Uh, the first one is funding. AppRite has a lot of funding, over $27 million raised to this day. Uh, investor backing from some of the top investors in the world. And at this point, we're fortunate enough to be able to be picky with the investors that we take on. So I don't think funding is going to be an issue anytime soon. When it comes to community support, AppRite has a massive community behind it. And on GitHub, AppRite is ranked in the top 300 of most starred GitHub repos out there. So uh, definitely some value there, over 46,000 GitHub stars. It's a very popular project, a lot of support from the open source community. And if you look at the Discord server, AppRite has one of the most active Discord servers I've ever seen. A lot of good support there from the official staff to the open source community, developers just coming in to help working on the project. And funny thing is, a lot of the developers at AppRite were actually working on AppRite before ever getting hired. They were simply contributing to an open source product. So if you want to see validity in a project that's being pushed by the community, AppRite is one of the best I've ever seen. And if there are fears of AppRite ever shutting down. You can always self-host. It's all yours. It's an open source project and there's still the open source community pushing it. So it doesn't mean the project itself will shut down if there is no backing from an official company. So as I said earlier, I'm not yet ready to build uh, some kind of a large project uh, that uh, solely depends on this uh, platform. This is the platform that uh, caught my attention on the other hand and I think that they do have uh, quite a lot of potential. So overall, I appreciate the feedback. We always welcome it. That's how we get better. Uh, one thing about this, I think Stefan, that was the person that made this video. I don't know if they've ever used AppRite based on the spelling. AppRite is spelled with a lowercase w. It's one word. And simply by the feedback provided, I noticed it was a lot about pricing. It was speculation. So Stefan, I welcome you to actually check out AppRite, try to use it, and I would love your genuine feedback after using the platform. There's only so much you can judge by this, uh, but I appreciate whatever we get. So anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you found it insightful, make sure to subscribe to the AppRite YouTube channel to see more content like this. Give it a like, and I'll see you all in the next video.